Hello, oh, this is Dr. E presenting 8.9 and 8.10 about solid weight disposal and solid waste reduction. 8.9 solid waste disposal. The basic things that we're going to be lo looking here, the learning objectives is describe solid waste disposal methods, describe the effects of solid waste disposal methods. There's a whole bunch of essential knowledge that you need to know here, so you make sure that you understand these factors. Uh, what we're going to be doing is using the data and evidence to support a potential solution in our FRQ later on. Solid waste types and solution and sources. So if we look, municipal uh, solid waste, MW, MSW, make sure you remember those letters. It's a solid waste from cities, from the municipalities, such as the households, businesses, and schools. In other words, the trash litter, garbage, refuge. The waste stream refers to the flow of solid waste to recycling centers, landfills, or trash incineration burning facilities. You can see here, can you figure out which has the highest percentage or the lowest? E-waste is an idea where it's old computers, TVs, phones, tablets, where it's electronic. Only 2% of uh, municipal solid waste is e-waste. It, but it's considered very hazardous waste due to the metals like cadmium, lead, mercury, and PBDEs, which are fireproof chemicals. <clears throat> These e-waste chemicals can uh, leach uh, into uh, the, the can leach endocrine disrupting chemicals out of the landfills if thrown away with regular MSW. It should be disposed of at special facilities that recycle the parts. Sanitary landfills. <clears throat> it's ape lingos for, uh, apes lingo for landfills, or where developed countries dispose of trash, other than dumps, where, uh, which are just areas where trash is dumped without, any, uh, without the features listed below. For example, in a landfill, there are clay along the bottom. See this along the bottom, so nothing goes through. Uh, so, Lay a layer of clay plastic on the bottom of a hole in the ground. It prevents pollutants from leaching down into the groundwater. The leachate system is a series of pipes at the bottom okay, that uh, collect the leachate, all the material, the water that goes down and leach, uh, solubilizes um, the waste and carries it down. And it makes it so that we can extract that and treat it and dispose of it. Methane recovery system. It's a system of tubes and pipes to collect the methane produced by the anaerobic decomposition of the landfill. And this methane can be used to generate electricity or heat buildings. Also, once it's completely done, there's a clay cap so that water can't keep on going. The clay soil mixture used to cover the landfill once it's full keeps out animals, keeps in the smell, allows vegetation to grow. Landfill contents and decompositions. Landfills generally have a very slow rate of decomposition due to low oxygen deep down, low moisture, and a low organic material combination. Since these factors are rarely present in a landfill, little decomposition occurs, and landfills typically remain about the same size as when they were filled. This one right here is a 40-year-old newspaper found in a landfill, and you can still read it perfectly well. Things that are not to be landfilled, hazardous waste like antifreeze, motor oils, cleaners, electronics, car batteries, metals like copper and aluminum. Old tires are often left in large piles, sort of like what we learned in the quick ride. We can see here, how long does it take for it to decompose? Uh, some of these will take two months. Some of them, like glass bottles or diapers, will take hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of months over years. Things that should not be landfilled. Cardboard or food wrappers that have too much food residue and can't be recycled. Rubber plastic films and wraps. Styrofoam. Food, yard waste, and paper can, can and do go in landfills, but should be recycled or composted. This should not go in because it's going to keep the water in there or burn, keep water in there so we get mosquitoes and 
spread all kinds of nasty diseases. Landfill issues. Landfills have environmental impacts like groundwater contamination and release of global uh, greenhouse gases. Groundwater can be contaminated with the heavy metals such as lead, mercury, or acids that throw away if people throw away their batteries, medications, and bacteria if leachate leaks uh, through lining into soil ground below. Greenhouse gases such as CO2 and methane are released from the landfills due to decomposition. Both contribute to global warming and, global, and climate change. Not in my backyard. People hate landfills in their backyard. It's the idea that communities don't want landfills near them for a number of reasons. One, they smell bad and they're ugly. Two, they attract animals like rats and crows and seagulls. Groundwater contamination concerns. Landfills should be located far from rivers and streams and neighborhoods to avoid water contamination. It goes down in, it sinks down, and then through the groundwater, it's going to have all these nasty chemicals that can uh, possibly go up and contaminate your drinking water. Landfills are often placed near low-income or minority communities that don't have the resources or political party power to fight against these decisions. Waste incineration, ocean dumping. Waste can be incinerated or burned to reduce the volume that needs to be landfilled. Since most of the waste, such as paper, plastic, food, is, uh, e is easily combust at high temperatures, can reduce the volume by 90%, but also produces CO2 and air pollutants. The bottom ash can contain toxic metals such as lead, mercury, and cadmium, and is stored in ash ponds then taken to special landfills. Sometimes the toxic metals can leach out of the storage ponds and be released. Okay, so here we're producing electricity. Sometimes, however, explosives can get a huge volume of something that might blow up in the waste incineration. It can be burned to generate electricity. Illegal ocean dumping occurs in some countries with few environmental regulations or lack of enforcement. But the problem there is plastic especially collects in large floating garbage patches in the ocean. They can suffocate animals if they ingest or entangle them so they can't swim or, or may starve. Practice FRQ 8.9. Can you use data and evidence to support a potential solution? Looking at this, looking at the numbers. Above is the, the municipal solid waste stream composition of the United States. Propose a solution to the federal government that would enact, that could enact, that would reduce the volume of waste entering landfills in the U.S. by at least 15%. Use evidence from the graph above to support your proposed solution. 8.10, waste reduction. How do we reduce it? Here, we're going to be looking at combustion of gases produced from decomposition of organic materials in landfills can be used to turn turbines and generate electricity. This process reduces landfill. Okay, that's the essential, one of the big essentials. And so one of the big learning objectives is to describe changes to current practices that would reduce the amount of generated waste and their associated benefits and drawbacks. So reduce, reuse, and recycle. The big three R's. Reducing consumption is the most sustainable because it decreases the natural resources harvesting and the energy inputs to creating, packaging, and shipping goods. Metal and, and reusable water bottles to reduce plastic use. Riding a bicycle or walking to reduce gasoline use. Reusing the next most sustainable because it doesn't require additional energy to create a product. Buying secondhand clothes, using old wooden pallets for furniture, washing plastic takeout containers, and reusing uh, other things. Recycling is a process and converting solid waste material into new products. Glass being turned into glass again. Plastic water bottles being turned into fabric for clothes. Plastic being used for in uh, roads. 
the least the, the recycling is the least sustainable of the three due to the amount of energy required to process and convert it back to waste materials plus not all plastics can be recycled and not all plastics can be recycled together recycling pros and cons recycling re reduces the demand for materials especially metals and wood because which cause habitat destruction and soil erosion when harvested it reduces the energy required to ship raw materials and reduce products. Uh, fewer fossil uh, fuel uh, combination, less uh, climate change. It reduces landfill volume, conserving landfill space and reducing need for landfills. Cons of recycling. It's costly, requires significant amount of energy. Cities that offer recycling need to process, sort, and sell collected materials. Prices do that cha rapidly change, leading to recycled material often being thrown away. When citizens recycle items that shouldn't be recycled, such as wrappers with food, styrofoam, etc., it increases the cost for cities to sort and process it. What you can see here is what's happened since 1980. The amount of stuff that has been discarded has been decreasing, the amount of uh, you can see that in the number of cans that are not there. The amount that's been incinerated has increased, and the amount that's been recycled has increased. Composting. Composting is where uh, organic material, uh, food scraps, paper, yard waste, is being decomposed under controlled conditions. It reduces landfill volume and produces rich organic material that can enhance water holding capacity, nutrient levels of agriculture, and green soil. It produces valuable products that you can sell, the compost, reduces the amount of methane released by anaerobic decomposition of organic matter in landfills, should be done with proper mix of browns, amount of carbon to greens, 30 to 1 should be aerated and mixed to optimize decomposition, allow the bacteria, but the bacteria need oxygen for decomposition. Potential drawbacks include the foul smell that can be produced if not properly rotated and aerated, and the rodents and other pests that can be attracted. E-waste, waste from electronics such as phone, computers, etc., oftentimes contain heavy metals such as lead, mercury, and cadmium. These um, materials, metals, can leach uh, into the soil and groundwater if disposed of in a landfill or open dump. They should be recycled and reused to create new electronics, but often sent to developing countries for re recycling use to, uh, th that leads to ha health hazards. Therefore, more strict environmental and worker protection laws need to be developed in developing countries. The e-waste can be dismantled and sold to countries that extract the valuable materials, for example, the gold, silver, and platinum from the motherboards. However, oftentimes it's burned or dumped due to less strict environmental regulations or lack of enforcement in developing countries. Waste to energy. Waste can be incinerated uh, or burned to reduce the volume and also generate electricity. Most waste, such as paper, plastic, and food, have hydrogen, carbon, and oxygen, so it's easily combustible at high temperatures. Same process as burning coal, natural gas, or biomass, where you, the heat from burning is used uh, to heat up water, to, to produce steam, to turn a turbine, to generate electricity. However, methane gas Produced by decomposition landfills can be collected with pipes and burned to gen generate electricity. So the, the methane produced here is going to be collected. It's going to be taken over here, burnt, he heated, to heat up the water so that the water can push the st become steam, which will turn a turbine and uh, generate electricity. It reduces the landfill volume, produces electricity without fracking or mining of fossil fuels. This is what's happening in Shoal Canyon. A lot of the, the there's lot, tons and tons of methane being removed from Shoal Canyon. At one point in time, 
25% of the electricity produced in Glendale came from the methane produced in Shoal Canyon. 8.10 FRQ Approximately 30 million mobile devices were sold in 1998 in the United States. The number sold increased to 180 million devices in 2007. Can you calculate the percent increase of mobile devices sales from 1998 to 2007? If each mobile device sold in 2007 contained an average of 0 0.03 grams of gold, can you calculate the number of grams of gold that were used in the production of the mobile devices sold in 2007? Hopefully this was helpful and thank you for listening.